Hello, I'm Chris Barrow with the BBC News. Britain's new king, Charles III, has given his first address to the nation since the death on Thursday of Queen Elizabeth. He said he wished to renew her pledge of loyalty, serving with respect, honour and love. The king conferred the titles of Prince and Princess of Wales on his eldest son William and his wife Catherine. He also spoke of his profound sorrow for the loss of his mother. To my darling mamma, as you begin your last great journey to join my dear late papa, I want simply to say this. Thank you. Thank you for your love and devotion to our family and to the family of nations you have served so diligently all these years. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. The King's address was broadcast on national television and shown to millions of people around the world. Our correspondent Rob Watson was watching. He sounded incredibly confident and he sounded incredibly sincere and heartfelt. And clearly he sounded as though he'd been thinking about this speech for a very long time, many years. And as he himself said, it was a speech, a moment that he'd been dreading, a moment that he knew that other people had been dreading. This is a traumatic moment for the nation. It's a traumatic moment for constitutional monarchy. The key at the moment for King Charles and for the palace is continuity, stability. The show goes on. Earlier today, large crowds welcomed King Charles outside Buckingham Palace in London on his return from Scotland, where Queen Elizabeth died. For 15 minutes, he shook hands with members of the public. Some sang God Save the King. Choreographed events have taken place across the UK, with gun salutes and bells ringing out to mark the Queen's death. A service of prayer was held at St Paul's Cathedral in the capital, where the Bishop of London, Sarah Mullally, paid this tribute. As we mourn her loss, give thanks for her life, may her words remind us of the power and strength to be found in coming together. She will be profoundly and greatly missed. Football fans in Britain say an opportunity to pay tribute to the Queen has been lost with the cancellation of all matches over the weekend. The Football Supporters Association said the sport could have brought people together and let them pay their respects alongside fellow fans. Boxing, rugby union and horse racing have also postponed events. There was no play in today's cricket test match between England and South Africa, but it will resume on Saturday. World news from the BBC. In other news, a Russian-backed official in occupied Ukraine has admitted that Ukrainian troops have achieved a significant victory this week. Kiev's forces claim to have advanced up to 50 kilometres into Russian-held territory, liberating more than 20 villages along the way. Hugo Beshega reports from Ukraine's capital. Ukraine's quick advance in the Kharkiv region seems to have caught Russian forces by surprise. A picture posted on social media showed Ukrainian troops holding up the country's flag at the entrance of Kupiansk, a strategic transport junction used by Russia to resupply its forces. A local official said civilians were being evacuated and Russian television showed reinforcements being sent. It's hard to independently verify the claims as Ukraine has imposed restrictions on the work of journalists in the area. But if confirmed, the gains could leave thousands of Russian forces encircled. Ethiopia has strongly criticised statements by a UN-appointed body urging the Security Council to prevent a further escalation of the civil war in the Tigray region. Fighting is reported to be continuing more than two weeks after a five-month truce was broken. The International Commission of Human Rights Experts said Eritrea was once again involved in the conflict. The Ethiopian government says the team is politically motivated. At least 15 people have been killed in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo during a rebel attack which left dozens of homes burned. The raid is the latest in a series of attacks in Ituri province. People in the area suspect it was carried out by the Kadeko militia. Colombia and Venezuela say they will reopen their border for cargo transport and flights later this month after years of tensions over political and ideological differences. Colombia's new left-wing president, Gustavo Petro, said the move marked a step towards normalising relations. BBC News.